I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm your host, Pastor Ace Sadakar, and you are watching Keys to Kingdom Living program. Today I'm bringing you a brand new word. It's entitled, Breaking the Stronghold of Lack. In America, it seems like fear is gripping the hearts of so many Christians. And whenever fear controls us, we have a tendency to not want to give out, but to receive in. And Jesus tells us in his word, it's more blessed for us as Christians to give than to receive. And today, the word that comes forth today was straight from the throne of God. And it will bring so much clarity and insight as to what's going on in the church in America and what's going on in our nation. And there's so much that I want to share with you. I want you to get the word of God out and go with me. And let's hear what the Spirit has to say today. This message is, in, is breaking the stronghold of lack. How many wants that done? When you break the stronghold of lack, Instead of a seed bearing 30-fold, it could bear 60-fold. Instead of bearing 60-fold, it could bear 100-fold. There's less work, and there's more productivity or more uh, effectiveness, more fruitfulness that comes from less work. That's called grace, where you abide, not work. Now, there's some things that we're going to revisit that I have to lay a foundation for those who have not been here for long and do not understand what it means to live by faith scripturally. We understand doctrinally from our uh, Sunday school days what that may mean. But I want to give you some things out of scripture to lay a foundation to help persuade you, for lack of a better term, to heed this word. Look there in Galatians 3, beginning with verse 5. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? How do things happen in this church? Do we keep the law? So it's not by the works of the law. Do we do it by the hearing of faith? I'm doing that right now. God has spoken to me clearly and distinctly and has released me to give this word, and it came by faith. And so we're operating under the same principle that Paul is teaching the church there in Galatia. Just as Abraham believed God, now how could he believe him if he did not hear God, right? So he obviously heard God say something, correct? Perhaps an instruction, Maybe an instruction and a promise. If you'll do this, I, will, I promise you, I will give you that, right? Leave your father's country and go to a land that I will give you. He had to leave first in order to get, right? So Abraham obviously heard God and believed it, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Think about that. Abraham became righteous because he heard God and believed it was a word from God and acted on what God said. And none of that was based on the law. Because Abraham is 400 years before Moses and the law. Amen? Amen? Therefore, know that only those, how many? Only those who are of faith are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are, are blessed with believing Abraham. Now look at that, y'all. Verse 9 should be the, the foundation of your faith for blessings. So then those who are of faith are what? Blessed with believing Abraham. What is the title of this message? Breaking the stronghold of lack. So if you want to be blessed as a Christian, you've got to be of the household of faith that Abraham was, and you've got to believe God. You've got to have intimacy with God. You have to have fellowship with him, communion, and then you've got to obey what he says. Amen? For as many are as of the works of the law, here it comes, they're under a curse. Not under a curse, they're under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Could you imagine having to keep up with the Ten Commandments, then the 600 and something uh, laws that, that Moses gave, keeping up with every one of them, plus their ordinances, and not breaking any of them at any time. 
That'd be hard to do, wouldn't it? Americans can't even remember the amendments. But that no one is justified by the law. The purpose of the law was not to justify us. It was to bring the knowledge of sin, right? But that no one is justified by the law, it's not by our works, it's not by us doing what we think God wants us to do, doing him good service. Well, I'll bless God if I go to the Galilean house and give these children, these poor children, a little uh, formula and diapers. God's really impressed with that. Not that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident for the just, say it with me, the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ, here it comes, Christ has redeemed us. Who's us? Those who believe in Jesus as the Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon, look at it, say it with me, Come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through what? Faith. Not of works, faith. Wow. Boy, I tell you, Paul was having a field day the day he got Galatians 3 in the Spirit. You and I as Christians have been redeemed from the curse of the law. We need to get that in our understanding. I am not under the curse, and you are not under the curse. I don't care how bad it gets in this world. I am not in of this world. I'm just stuck in it. It's like a bad nightmare. I'm just stuck in it. I'm not participating in it. I'm just stuck there. When I wake up, I'm going to be out of that nightmare. Christ took on the curse that was upon all mankind and upon us as Christians before we became born again. Now, he who knew no sin, Paul says, became sin for us, or sin's offering, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If you're alive today, then you are either living under the curse of the law or you're living under the blessing of God. Think about that. There's only two classes of people. If you have breath in your lungs today, you're either under the curse of the law or you're under the blessing of God. Now, you may say, I'm blessed because I am a Christian. But let me ask you this question. Are you living by faith and following through with your profession of faith by living an obedient life before God who sees all things? People say, I'm blessed because I'm a Christian, but they're not living the Christian life. There's only one way to have a blessed life and not be under the curse of the law, and that is to live, live, live as active, is to live by faith. If you're, if you're living your life on your terms as a Christian, then you're not living by faith. Anybody can do that. Let me give you a, a revelation here. You're not your own God. What you write on the paper is not the law of God. You've got to look outside yourself and say, God, what do you want for my life? Now, how was Abraham, who is the father of the faith, how was he made righteous in God's sight? Was it through his works and being good enough? Well, why do believers believe that? We, we've got relatives. I, I think some of them are doctors. <laughs> but some of them are not. That, that believe, if I just am good enough, God's going to be pleased with me. You got any relatives like that? All of us do. Or was he made righteous? Was Abraham made righteous when God gave him instructions along with promises and he believed those things that God said and he did it? That's how he became righteous, right? Turn with me to Romans 10. I can't belabor this too long because I need to get to the point. Romans 10, verse 11. For the Scripture says, whoever believes, there it is again, on him, meaning Jesus, will not be put to shame. I love that Scripture. 
Because there's a lot of times the accuser of the brethren loves to put us to shame, right? Make us look bad. When it's him that's doing the, the accusation and the, the casting of dispersions upon us. But he says, whoever, God says it, whoever believes on Jesus, his son, will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who what? Call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Oh, now we're getting down where we live. How are they going to call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? There's that preacher role. And how shall they preach unless they're sent? There's y'all's role. Y'all got a scent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel. Now it's, it's the wheels, the tires, because we fly and we ride. Who bring glad tidings. That was a joke. Let's move on. Who bring glad tidings of good things, but they have not all, uh-oh. They preached, right? But the, the ones who heard it did not obey. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. They heard it. Some of them even believed it, but they did not obey it. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? In other words, who believed it enough to act on it? So then faith comes by how? Hearing. It doesn't say faith comes by works. Faith comes by hearing. Well, how does hearing come? By the Word of God. So if you're hearing the Word of God, then that gives you the, the avenue to hear from God, right? Amen. If I'm reading Sports Illustrated or, or uh, Mechanics Illustrated, then you're not going to hear God out of that. You're going to hear the world, right? But if I'm reading the Word of God to you or you're reading the Word of God to yourself, you're giving yourself the benefit for God to speak to you from that Word, right? Amen. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But I say they have not all heard. Yes, indeed, their sound has gone out to all the earth and the words to the ends of the world but I say did not did Israel not first Moses says I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation and I will move you to anger by a foolish uh, by a foolish nation now how did you learn I'm talking to y'all how did y'all learn about salvation from sin through Jesus Christ did you learn it from the world no did you learn it maybe perhaps through a, a parent who taught you the Word of God, a, a Sunday school teacher or a minister? Did you hear it through the Word of God? Yes. Salvation is a promise. Nobody wants to preach that today. Salvation is a promise. He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved, the Bible says. Everything that God gives to you comes to you by a promise. Faith comes alive in us. Now, you want the faith that the God has placed in you, God has given to every person the measure of faith, right? How do you get that faith alive? Watching TV? Come on, Packers. I don't even know if they still play. Okay. <laughs> Pray for me. Faith comes alive in us when we hear God speak his word of promise to us directly. When he speaks his word to us directly, it awakens our faith. It, 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 just, it, it just, there it is. And when you got faith, you can, you, you 10 foot tall and bulletproof. And when you don't have it, you up under a rock somewhere. Now, how did you learn about being blessed in Christ and that you're no longer under curse? It was taught to you and you heard it, right? Faith comes by. And so somebody tells you, you were a mistake, you're a failure, you're an outcast, you'll never be anything, you'll never accomplish anything, you're going to put faith in that. But if you hear Christ has redeemed you from the curse and now the blessing of God, the blessing of Abraham is upon you, that was taught to you, and you heard it, and your faith came alive and says, you know what? That's God speaking. I know the difference between man accusing me and God building me up. I've learned that much. The moment you believe God's word, that in Christ you are no longer under the curse but blessed, you became blessed, watch this, apart from works. Isn't that good? 
I didn't earn it. I didn't give enough for it. I couldn't buy it. Simon, the, the magician or sorcerer, tried to buy it, and, and Peter looked at him and says, you're going to perish with your money. You can't be good enough to earn God's grace. Faith comes by hearing, and we receive by faith. The Jews believed, according to Romans 10, 3, that they could obtain righteousness by keeping the law of God without faith. Let me say that again, because sometimes I move on, y'all still back there. Come on up here with me. In Romans 10, 3, the Jews literally thought that they could obtain righteousness by keeping the law of God apart from faith in Christ. Today, it's just the opposite. Today, there are believers who believe they can receive God's promises by faith without any obedient actions. James called them, faith without works is dead. Did you know James warns us there in chapter 2 and in chapter 1 too also that, that this is a false belief? He did. He says, faith without works is dead. But he also said in, in, in uh, James 1, 22, that when you're hearers and not doers of the word, you deceive yourself. And there's, there's no telling untold how many people say they're believers in Christ, but they do not follow up their faith with obedient actions. And all they're doing is deceiving themselves. I had this realization I saw this guy this morning. I can't go into detail because some of you know him. And he hollered at me across the store. He does not attend church. And he was leaving. I saw him get in his car. And this grieving came over me. There's no telling how many millions of people like this man they believe in their belief that their belief is going to save them. You cannot believe in your belief. You've got to believe in that word. And these men and women, these young men and women who believe in their belief, I believe what I believe is correct, even though it's not held up by Scripture. And because I have faith in something, that faith in something is going to save me. And they're going to stand before Christ, and he's going to say, I never knew you. And they will go into eternal damnation and thinking they were saved all the while. And it broke my heart. You're not going to sit in this church and be that ignorant. Your belief in belief is hogwash. It's filthy rags in the sight of God. Your faith in this will save you. Now, let's get to the point of the message. Exodus 12. Exodus 12, verse 7. You know the story. God is about to... Uh, he's already poured out plagues upon Egypt, and every plague that he poured out upon Egypt... Pharaoh hardened his heart even more against God and against Moses, would not let God's people go. And so finally, God says, I'm going to pour out one more plague. I'm going to kill all the firstborn of, the, of, of man and of beast. And this is the only way you're going to escape this, Israel, this last curse, this last plague, is that you obey my command of what I'm about to tell you to do through my servant Moses. Let's pick it up from verse 7. God is speaking. And they shall take some of the blood from the lamb that they had put up, and then they kill it. It says, You shall take some of the blood from that lamb and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they, ate, where they ate it or they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire, uh, with unleavened bread, this is the, the, the Seder or the Passover meal, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw, nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head 
with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it with a belt on. Now watch this. What I'm about to read you parallels with the whole armor of God spoken about by Paul the Apostle in Ephesians 6. You shall, put, you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, with sandals on your feet, and with a staff in your hand. So shall you eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will... When do you put on the, the whole armor of God? In the evil day. Evil's fixing to come through Egypt. For I will... Who's speaking? God. I will pass through the land of Egypt that night and strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both male and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you. The curse shall not lie, without a cause, right? Shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So this day shall be to you a memorial uh, that you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by, the ever, by an everlasting ordinance. Now, if the Jews had heard what God said but didn't believe that they had to work by applying that blood to the doorpost and lintel of their houses, would their faith alone save them? Really? What church y'all go to? Well, I believe the blood saves. But did they have to apply it? They had to do action. Faith without works is what? Dead. And so God said, verse 13, look at it with me again. Now the blood shall be a sign for you, and when I see the blood. God. Did you hear that? When I see you have obeyed what I said, I will protect you because the blood has been applied. God did not apply that blood to the doorpost and the lintel. Moses didn't apply it. The people had to do it. And when they applied the blood, the blessing came on the house. God. Oh, I believe. We'll keep you believing. Faith along with obedience is required in order to receive God's promise in your life. First, you must hear what God is saying, either by the Spirit of God or by His servants, the prophets, His ministers. Secondly, you have to act on what you have heard to show that you believe what you heard is actually from God. So if you really believe that this word is a word from God, then you will act on it. It'll solidify what you believe. Now, for several weeks, I've told you, the Holy Spirit has been stirring in my spirit about the issue of lack in this house. Although I've uh, felt the need in my spirit to address this stronghold from Scripture, I had not gotten the release in my spirit until this week. The Lord began to reveal to me the truths uh, from His Word on how to break the stronghold of famine, which is a curse. Now, in more particular for this body, the famine, the lack, has been in the last year especially, probably the last 15 months, that we have not been able to give to missions, but very small portions. And some of the ministries that we supported over the years consistently, we had to stop. It wasn't there. And you know by my own uh, admission, I have not been gotten paid, not gotten paid many pay periods this year to keep the doors open of this place. And so it was not there to give to missions. So there is a famine in this house for missions outside this house. And it has grieved my heart that I have to tell Pastor Johnson, we can't send you anything. To tell the Ruth house, we don't have it. We're supposed to have more than enough Amen. in the house of God. So there's lack in this house because we're not able to fulfill the vision because the provision is not there. 
So this, this stronghold has to be addressed. It is a demonic stronghold that has reared its head up and is opposing the word of God that's being spoken in this house. It's not my battle. It's not your battle. It is a spiritual battle. And we've got to know how to take it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an eight-week study on climate change. That'll fix it. I just want to make sure you're listening. <laughs> this word is ministering to you, and I'm sure it is because the Spirit of God was so powerful in the sanctuary when he had me deliver it to the congregation. And you love to hear this in its entirety. Please contact our church office. The information will be at the bottom of your screen. Let them know by the title what message you would like to hear. Today's message is breaking the stronghold of lack they'll be sure to send that out to you specify if you want cd or dvd they can let you know the price is there as you call them that would be uh, great to hear from you as well let us know how you're being ministered to and from where you're listening uh, that would help us as well we'd love to hear from you also uh, if you would like to send us a prayer requests the best and quickest way to do that is via email prayer at whcnorth.org brings it straight to us we're able to pray instantly in agreement as well as our intercessors pray and believe with you we've seen many testimonies how god has uh, saved marriages restored homes healed the sick done so many powerful things simply through the prayer of agreement through the internet and we're so grateful to have that opportunity so if you have a prayer request or need just send those in to us and we'd be glad to agree with you if you would like to be a part of this television ministry and so into the ministry that is touching the nations of the world, I invite you to go on our website, whcnorth.org, and click on the Donate tab. You can give there safely and securely. Also, all uh, proceeds that come through there are directly for television ministry and go to get this message out to the nations, and it is tax deductible. We're a part of a 501c3, which allows us to have... Uh, receive donations, and you to get a deduction. So consider that, especially the coming into a new year and uh, allowing God to use you to bless this ministry. It will be greatly appreciated. So until this time next week, may God richly bless you is our prayer. We pray that you've been impacted by today's message. If you need more information or would like to contact us, visit us on our website at whcnorth.org. Or contact us by phone at 706-374-6175. To write us, our address is P.O. Box 968, Morganton, Georgia, 30560. Our campus is located at 135 Bud Franklin Drive, Blairsville, Georgia, 30512. 